You're awfully good at that. But seriously, yeah, my sandwiches end up with great lumps. Uh -huh. Well, it helps to have a compulsive streak. Well, I've only got one of those. But it only works with the laundry. No carryover to food, nothing at all. Oh, I can't believe you don't do something wonderful with your refrigerator full of carrots. Besides carrot juice. Mm. No, there's a great need to have the carrots available. I open uh, the refrigerator door and there's all this health inside. And sometimes I don't even make the juice. Just keep the fridge stopped, huh? I used to be like that about my blanket. <laughs> well, you have to uh, take your security where you find it. Oh, absolutely. This is where I really found security. Right here. For the longest time. With the Ryans, you mean? Yes. And especially in this kitchen. When I was very little, my favorite spot was under this table. <laughs> my father had come to play chess with Johnny on Sunday afternoons. Ned settled down in the bar, and I'd settle down in here with Maeve and Mary and Siobhan. But after a while, I'd curl up under the table with my glass of milk and my stack of graham crackers and just let the family surround me. Frank and Kathleen running in and out, and Pat always excited about one thing or another. Pat still means uh, a great deal to you, doesn't he? Uh, when we were kids, he was so spirited, he terrified me. But now he's uh, a dear friend. And in between? I was in love with him. Very nearly married him. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Hi. Folks around? Ah, you just missed them. I've gone over to the uh, Christmas Bazaar at the church. Now, why don't you join them? Father McShane is having the boys quiet, and he's having a dance band. Oh, hey. uh, honey, why don't we just have a drink and then go straight over to Lem's? I think church is going to be a little bit too crowded, and you did say you want a peace and quiet, right? Okay. Sherry? Um, no, no, I think I'd like something special because it's Christmas time. How about a frozen daiquiri, okay? Do you mind? I just love the way that you make it. Coming up. Pat, will you hold the fort while I pop down to the storeroom? Kevin, I don't think he really can. Sure, go ahead. Gonna be... Excuse me. All right, Hi, Kevin. Kevin. Now, by the time I was ten, I had a whole collection of odd things I needed to carry around. <laughs> so that you could uh, feel safe? No, uh, back then, uh, cramming my pockets with stones and horse chestnuts, it was like part of getting dressed. That was before I got into carrots. <laughs> Good thing, too. <laughs> Hello there. Hi. I didn't realize you were here. Yeah, we, we just wrapped by for a drink. Uh, yeah, Patty's got to take over for uh, Kevin. I guess we have to stay, huh? At least long enough for you to have your daiquiri. Well, we'll uh, just get along with our dinner. And the guy at the liquor store said that that was thoroughly chilled, but it doesn't feel that cool to me. It's fine. Okay. Oh, I wonder what we're gonna do with all of this stuff. What? No, no, I, I was just wondering where we're gonna put all of this stuff. Well, the closet in Evans. Yeah, it's filled with elephants and stuffed animals that you keep buying him. Well, this suitcase has only books, so I'll put those in my office. Oh. Yeah, that, that's good. But well, they're still my, my, my clothes. More? <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid so, yeah. There's just enough here to get me through the weekend. My goodness. 
<laughs> okay, I I'll only bring my winter suits over. No, I I'll leave. I'll leave the rest of my clothes over there. Make it look like somebody's still living there. <laughs> I scared you, didn't I? No, you nah. did not. No, no. I'm just not used to having anybody move in here with me. But uh, I'm glad you're here. I hope you always feel that way. I want so much for us to stay together. I wish you could stay the night. I would have to have my husband's permission. On second thought... Uh... <laughs> Come on, just think of it this way. We were lucky to have a lovely long playtime. And if we take care, we can plan another one real soon. On the other hand, if we get piggy, we get caught. Uh, I don't want to get caught. Not by W.P. Woodard. Mm -mm. No. We have a nice arrangement here, my friend. Let's take good care of it, huh? I, uh, I won't be piggy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only promise I want from you. Now, I, uh, I want a promise from you. Not undying love. Lord, no. Does it have anything to do with commitment? Hmm. Responsibility? Will you watch your language, Ray? <laughs> promise you'll, uh, you'll think about the fun we had today. Oh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. We'll do just mm -hmm. Good night. Mm -hmm. Good night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> say this. We don't have anything to drink. Well, don't be reluctant then. Sure she let us have some beer. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, yours, mister? Uh, two beers, Pat, please. Your husband's a man of many talents. You know, I used to tend beer, too. I tend to the bar. See, I used to work here. Delia's famous ham sandwiches. Hey, Pat, you remember those? Vaguely. Oh, come on, honey. Don't be sarcastic. See, I think he's a little upset because he had to take over for Kevin. Gee, thanks. Whoops. I also used to wait on tables. Excuse me. See, Patty and I really wanted to be by ourselves tonight. Nobody bothering us, you know? Thank you. It's okay. Beer, bread, and mayonnaise. You know... I just wouldn't dare to have all those empty calories for dinner. You know, the least little bit of weight I put on, I just pop right out of my clothes. You know, you're very lucky you're so skinny. Well, some people say fat is beautiful. I guess we just have to enjoy what we get. Enjoy? Mm. Honey, all your ice is melting. I don't believe it. You just said the meanest thing to me. Forget it. Mm -hmm. Kevin's back. You want to move on to Lem's? No, um, why don't we just sit down over there and, um, finish our drinks, okay? Come on. Honey, I know that you love me, so I'm not going to let fate spoil our evening, okay? To better times. I promise you, I'm not going to... I'm going to change the furniture around, okay? Forget about the furniture. To us. Faith? I'm sorry, did you say something? Well, there's nothing important. You know, it's sad to lose a person you love to someone fairly decent. I've had that happen to me, but to a lady like that, Oh, don't get me started on her. All right. Not if it upsets you. No, it's just that I have a hard time stopping. Delia brings out the negative in me. That's a side of you I haven't seen. <sighs> I thought you were very pleasant to her at Mary's wedding. Then again, I was drunk at Mary's wedding. <laughs> well, 
Drunk uh, is probably the best way to tolerate Delia. Yeah, well, I don't know. She had her troubles. I... I guess it's no wonder she turned out to be such a wild neurotic. But? But she uses people. She feeds on them. She just loves them and needs them to death. But the Ryans uh, adopted her more or less. Well, it all started with them taking Bob Reed under their wing. He was Frank's best friend in grade school, and his parents were very sad people. Naturally, uh, Bob brought his little sister along. My impression is that uh, Maeve won't take any nonsense from her. Now, I know Mary doesn't. <laughs> oh, Mary and I have always shared a, a certain gut reaction to Delia. She lies and she whines. It made Mary want to hit her and me want to get away from her. You didn't invite her under the table with you? <laughs> she wouldn't be caught dead hiding. Delia has to be seen. Even if she's being pathetic and shy and silent, she needs someone to notice. Maeve was sorry for her, but she was too busy to hold her hand all the time. It wasn't long before Delia found another Ryan. Patrick. Yep. And he's been fixing her skates and fighting her battles and rescuing her for years and years. He must like something about it. Obviously he does, though. I can't understand how he can tolerate. Oh, Patty, I'm so scared. I have to cross this street. Please hold me tight so the cars don't hurt me. Oh, Patty, you are so wonderful. You make me so happy. Thank you for taking care of me. I just love being with you. Honey, honey you know, I just love being out with you. Why don't we pretend that we're the only people left in the whole world, okay? It's just us. Okay. Oh, I forgot to tell you about uh, the rest about that outpatient. Shh. There is no outpatient clinic. Just us, remember? Sometimes more is my No. I do my takeoff on Delia, but it's a pretty bitter little thing. Not much humor involved. Lots of anger, though. Mountains of it, I suspect. You see, it goes back to the engagement and planning our wedding and the lives we'd share. The careers and uh, the babies, the house. And when did Pat give in to her? The third grade, when she announced she was pregnant, who knows? It was a few weeks before the date we'd set. Did you ever tell her what you think about her, straight out? I mean, really give her hell? Yes, actually. But it didn't do either one of us very much good. How about Pat? Did I argue with him, you mean? Sure, till I was blue in the face. I even went so far as to accept his getting her pregnant. I offered to raise the baby. Uh-huh. And he still? Gave me up for her. And a baby that I'm not entirely convinced she was carrying. My God, Faith, you must be furious with him. I mean, Delia aside, it was Pat's decision. I've never dealt with anger very well. That's something Pat and I have in common. I was distant and silent with him for a while, but... But the more she makes him miserable, the more I have to be his friend. He's a very kind and compassionate man. That's one reason why he's such a good doctor. And why he's trapped himself with her. He looks worse every time that I see him, either sick or desperate or both. Now, how can you get angry with that? He's the one who has to get angry. Everybody else's hands are tied. So are his. Do you think he'll ever get away from it? If we could just go someplace, you know, during the week where we could be alone and pay attention to each other, right? With no distractions, that would make me happy. We can be quiet at home, too. No, at home the telephone is always ringing and there are bills and too much cooking to be done. See, we should just set aside a couple of special days. See, like a date, you know, and that would be good for us. Now, see, there's a tremendous difference between you now when you first got home tonight. You were tired and you were angry, and I think you were looking to pick a fight. So it just happened to be about the furniture. But I promise you, I'm going to change that. 
Now, I know you're mad, but I just think that anything would have set you off. So you were in a bad mood before. But now I feel like it's over because we've had some time alone. See, I think it's very important that we just stay close. If I could have it that way, I know everything would be all right. But everything's not all right. It's terrible. In fact, I've never been so unhappy in my life. You're trying to make me sad. No, I'm just trying to tell you the truth, whether you want to hear it or not. I hate being here with you. I hate coming home to you. I'm so tired of you and your bloody demands that I don't even want to sleep with you anymore. Everybody wants to sleep with me. In that case, everybody can have you. I'm getting out. Penny, I'm a beautiful woman and I love you. You're not a woman. You're a helpless infant and I'm sick to death of wasting my time on you. You care about yourself, period. The world revolves around Delia. And I've been going right along with it, God help me. But I'm finished now. I want a divorce. I want to go back to loving the right woman. I want you out of my life. You'll never get away from me. I won't let you. Just watch me. I just love it when you smile at me like that. It's not a sad face. No, just serious. This is a very serious moment. Yes. No, come on, it really is. I mean, this is my house. It's more my home than my parents' home was. And I've never shared it with anybody except Edmund. No, 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 no. Frank never lived here. He stayed a few nights, but it was nothing permanent. I want to be permanent. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I forgot. You're afraid of that? Oh, no. Not as much as I used to be. Obviously. Obviously. Ah. Uh. <clears throat> to... To a very... positive beginning in the right direction. <laughs> to a little boy who is gonna love having a full-time father. To our son. Edmund Strong Coleridge. Well, well, hi. I'm waiting for your husband. Ah, uh, I hope he's not down in X-ray. Last time they sent him down there, he was there for hours waiting. Well, I've got the time and uh, plenty of work to keep me busy. Work, huh? You know you're about as bad as Bill. Well, you're a great one to talk. I don't think I've ever come into your room to see you at least filing your nails or at least resting. Okay, well, I'm a grind, too. <laughs> but I am very careful to put aside some time for myself. All pleasure and no business, and I think everybody needs it. Yeah, in general, I agree with you. But not you. Well, I have uh, my moments of relaxation, but they've been coming lately only after I've driven myself long and hard. And then as my eyes begin to roll back into my head, I have a few blissful moments of knowing that I'm about to fall asleep. Sleeping is great. What about fun? Fun is my little boy and my family. There hasn't been anybody new, has there, since Miss Coleridge? No. By the way, if I'm out of line, just mention. No, you're not. I can talk about Jill. I suppose to some people, for uh, five years, we were the perfect couple. But uh, my wife and my religion were in the way all that time. But even so, we had something that was like a marriage, 
complete trust, understanding, love. Sounds like it might have even been better than a marriage. Maybe it was, but we were uh, never able to make it that permanent. Even after Jill and I were free enough to get married, we just uh, couldn't get that far. I'm sorry. Still care very much for her, don't you? Well, the point being that I'm no longer committed to her, but uh, that idea is sort of slow and sinking in. <laughs> well, if hard work is the medicine that makes it all stop hurting, then Bill and I will supply you amply. Your congressional campaign, my friend, is going to be a stunner. Well, it is now. <laughs> we'll work very hard, exhaust ourselves, and enjoy ourselves thoroughly in the process. Send you off to Washington in a blaze of glory. You know, you are the most confident woman I have ever met. How can I tell you I know what I know? Well, so tell me. <laughs> How do you know? Because I have a knack for organization. I see to it that my own life runs smoothly, and I will do the same for your campaign. episode of General Hospital Night Shift and the explosion that rocked the hospital leaves one doctor's life hanging in the balance. An all-new General Hospital Night Shift, Tuesday at 11 p.m. on SoapNet.